Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at a firewall software called Glasswire. A lot of you have been asking me about this and other potential firewall options, so I decided to take a look at it. A couple of things to remember though before we get into the actual application. This is more designed to provide administrative tools, assistance to people who need it, more for pro users. If you just want to protect your system against malware, this is probably not your best bet. You probably want to go with some kind of typical internet security application. Most of those will come with firewalls or with some kind of Windows firewall configuration. However, for those of you who are kind of interested in monitoring network activity, looking at your process, especially if you're concerned about privacy and what applications are connecting to the internet and when, this might be super useful. It's a very small program, easy setup, super light as well, so that shouldn't be an issue. Woohoo! So we have the program running in the background, and as you can see it's already giving us alerts, the first one being Microsoft Edge of course. First network activity. And one of the things I like the most about this application is the GUI. It's very user friendly, and not just that, it's elegant. It almost makes me want to look at network activity from my applications, which, well, isn't something that most people are quite interested in. If you go into the alert section, it's going to show you all the alerts. As you can see, it does show you alerts even for Windows process. So it isn't an anti-malware application in any sense. It's not going to help you detect malware. Well, it might, but it's not your traditional kind of malware detection where you just um, sit back and let it decide what's malware and what's not. This is very much a tool to add to your arsenal, especially if you're managing a larger network. Now, if we go into firewall, you can block specific process and specific connections. If you go into things, you can actually see like devices. So if you're running like IoT, this is kind of useful. You can also monitor network usage, so if your internet is slow and you think something is using a ton of data, you can do that. But then again, you can do that in Task Manager, so that isn't really a major feature. But some of the things that I am quite interested in, I'll show you in Settings. So of course, there's General and there's Appearance. Both the themes are excellent. Um, you can use the Night theme if you want Dark Mode. If you go into Security, Action of RDP, so Remote Desktop Protocol is constantly being exploited by malware. Ah, oh, and you can see Microsoft, as usual, hogging up the internet. It's something it loves to do. This time it's Visual Studio. But yeah, going back to RDP, a lot of ransomware is actually distributed via first some kind of RDP attack, some kind of brute force that allows the attacker to gain access to your system, and then they use some kind of remote code execution to get the ransomware up and running. So something like this could prevent the initial attack, although I doubt if it's going to be able to actually stop ransomware from encryption, mostly because these days ransomware doesn't even necessarily require command and control server integration to be able to encrypt your data. Even if it can reach the server, it'll encrypt it anyway. Now, it does have virus total integration, and this is something you can definitely use to check if a process is malicious. So I'm going to enable this and automatically analyze all apps. Once we have this option enabled, I think if we go into apps, okay, it's not here, it's in the firewall settings. So you have a little virus total tab, and any particular file, you can just click on analyze and it's going to give you the virus total scan results. But again, this is going to be more of a reactive approach rather than actually detecting files that are malicious and blocking them. Just out of curiosity though, I'm going to run some kind of ransomware and we'll see how it reacts. So I think I'll run, um, let me see. Let's try running Rook. It is a recent ransomware sample. It's the one that was involved in another high-level US attack where they ended up paying a ton of money to get their data back. I might make a dedicated video on that at some point, but for now let's just run it, see what we get here. Let's see if it triggers any alerts at all. So far there's nothing. And, well, <laughs> it looks like Glassware was terminated. Ransomware doesn't like us monitoring it. If I launch it again, I can definitely hear my fan ramping up. I'm guessing that's the ransomware at work. We have a lot of communication here, but that's just uh, the Windows host process. I'm not seeing any alerts, which is a little bit surprising. I would have thought that the ransomware would have triggered something. Ah, okay. Windows Defender smart screen. Probably checking the file in the background. 
as you can see, at the moment it's taking up quite a bit of CPU, and our files are probably encrypted at this point. Okay, not yet. I think this is one of those samples which does the entire encryption and then all of a sudden everything changes. So I'm guessing it's just a matter of time. By the way, this is some kind of glitch. We do have access to the internet. I don't know why Windows thinks we don't. I'll just show you that we do. So it seems to detect every legitimate activity, but uh, not the ransomware. Maybe because the ransomware hasn't communicated at all. Huh, that would be disappointing. Let's see if I can find another sample that might try and reach its CNC. Let's try Spora. Have a little bit of a ransomware versus ransomware contest. See which one gets the data first. Okay, Ryuk is done. We have the ransom note. And our files are gone as well. Nice. And uh, we had absolutely no notifications from the firewall. So that's interesting. And I believe this is Spora, so yeah, it managed to execute as well. Again, no alerts triggered. So probably a couple of these, maybe. But as you can tell, it's not going to be effective in terms of preventing any kind of actual attacks in, in most cases. It's one of the things a lot of people hype firewalls a lot. I've noticed some people actually ask me whether or not glassware is going to be useful in terms of preventing ransomware attacks. Some even say, well, I don't need an AV, I just use glasswire. So no, this is not an AV replacement. It is not going to help you detect ransomware, trust me. I mean, I'm an experienced user and I know what I'm running. And still, if this was my own system, I wouldn't have noticed, right? There's no clear alerts. And even if there is some suspicious activity, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to pick it up and block it instantly. So this is more useful as a monitoring tool. If you want to look at your Windows activity when Windows is sneakily downloading something and go back and change your privacy settings, maybe if you want to know if some app is sending your data in the background, those are the kind of things if you're looking to dig around, this might be useful. Again, if you're a network admin, might be useful. I'm not saying this is a bad application, but don't misunderstand its use case. And don't run it on your system expecting it to protect you against ransomware because it just won't. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's kind of a short one, but I did want to do it just because of the number of people that seem to be using applications like these. Again, I have nothing against Glasswire. It's a great application. I really like the UI. If I were a network admin, I'd probably use it. I do run it on my system sometimes just to kind of see what applications are connected to the internet and what data they're sending. Do I recommend it to everyday users as malware protection? Nah. Do I recommend replacing Windows Firewall with this for better security? Not really. As I said, if you don't use it correctly, this tool is probably not going to be relevant. For most general use cases, you're much better off getting an internet security application. But maybe you use it for something else. Let me know in the comments below. This is Leo. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.